which is which is true. But at the same time, once we start pulling out, I just just want to make sure that we on this day I say that we could do that and we have not be we have, absolutely. We have my pledge if anybody wants even to pull okay, out. Okay, no. them and absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. my concern when I met with the city manager with this, um, I was very concerned. We were having a lot of um, items on the agenda that was just kind of floating through. Um, and that, that must and I had, you know, I'm sorry, a lot of the folks were from yeah, the Mr. Attorney, me, but most of the concerns Mr. Attorney, let me ask you one, one question. The if there is a request to remove an item from the consent agenda, would we not be violating the rights of the public to not want to, to go ag against pulling it out? If any member from the public wants to talk about an item, even if it's on the item ag ag agenda, they should be able to, to opine on it. Um, even if it's voted on They would do it through, yeah. Yeah, even if it's voted on a consent agenda, they always have the opportunity to speak yeah. on the item at public hearing. Yeah, public hearing yeah. and everything. Okay, well, so since, so since I'm kind of getting the consensus that we will be all right with pulling uh, items on there, I will definitely... I so. you you will Okay, I'll but definitely mm -hmm. withdraw the, um, the, the agenda item. All right. And looking for some clerk. Mayor, real quick, I have to address a concern that um, Galvin had. So let me tell you guys a bit. Councilman Galvin. Vice Mayor Galvin. Oh, Vice Mayor Galvin is fine. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Vice Mayor. Galvin okay, so um, <laughs> we have a big problem with that type of issue. So, for example, if this resolution, we don't codify our resolutions. That's the answer to the question. The clerk office receive them. By charter, we're supposed to store them. But what we do codify is our ordinances. So we get them, we pass them, we send them over to Municode. Municode put them in nice little sections and paragraphs so we can always conduct legal research and get it done. Now, I'm a law, I was a law librarian as well. The problem with the resolutions, they're supposed to be temporary in nature. So there's oh. a difference between ordinances and resolutions. So if you have a resolution that you intend to keep permanently or for a long time, you should pass it as an ordinance. This is why. Once, once the resolution is approved, it goes into our book, and we don't see it anymore because it's for that temporary time or when that contract expires. But if it's something that's supposed to be permanent in nature, what's going to happen is in four or five years when a new council is up here, someone's going to be like, well, I thought we already addressed this. What the city attorney's office is going to have to do, they're going to have to go back and read every single resolution that we've passed for the past four or five years and see if they can find that resolution because it's not alphabetized, it's not in a particular order, it's just out there because it's supposed to be temporary <coughs> in nature. So you may be right, the, c the problem is, and I would advise you guys, whenever you want to approve something, they teach us this when we go to these clerk academies, whenever you want something to be in our permanent book where everyone can remember it and we can go and look at the ordinance, it should be introduced as an ordinance so that it can be codified by Muni Code. So that was my two cents since you, you guys brought that up. We, I didn't know. That, that All right. That kind of can we get a motion or not a motion? It's been withdrawn. It's, yeah. it's been withdrawn, okay. So tab P has been Sorry, tab P has been removed. It's been withdrawn. Tab Q. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, providing for the ratification of the memorandum of understanding agreement between the city of North Miami and the Dade County Police Benevolent Association, Inc., PBA, to increase the incentives available to police field training officers authorizing the city manager to execute and to take all necess actions necessary to implement the agreement, providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Now it's tab Q. Now we have some Good evening, Go Mayor and Council. Joe Roglieri, Personal Administration Director. We currently have a contract with the PBA in the city. The method we use when we have to address some issues that are not working in the operations and administration of that contract is to enter into a memorandum of understanding. In this case, the city was unable to recruit enough field training officers that's an assignment for an officer to train a newly hired police cadet. The reason that we isolated was the compensation for that position was not enough. It was only one administrative leave day per month. So we met with the PBA in the practice of good labor management relations 
and came up with a slight modification to give an additional day of administrative leave per month and to waive the take-home vehicle fee of 32 cents per mile. So we request your approval of this ordinance resolution. Is it 30 or 32? Mm -hmm. You say 32. You say 32. Is it 30 or 32? It's 30 or 30 cents per mile. Oh. All right, public hearing is now open on the item, item Q. Not Q as cute, but Q as <laughs> quiet. <laughs> I see no one coming, so public hearing is closed. Members of the dais? Move approval. Second. I have a motion made by mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Galvin to approve tab Q as is. The motion was seconded by Mayor Smith-Joseph. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passes with a 5-0 vote. Tab R, proposed ordinance, first reading of the City of North Miami, Florida, amending Article 4, Employees Retirement System, Ordinance Number 691, and Article 5, Police Pension Plan, Ordinance Number 748, specifically at Section 15-90, entitled Retirement Benefits, and section 15-126.3, entitled Law Enforcement Service Credit, Contributions for Law Enforcement Service, providing for repeal, conflicts, severability, Please be quiet, especially when the clerk is reading the resolution or the ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. And for an effective date, and that was tab R. Good evening once again. This time we do have an ordinance before you. And it's a pension ordinance change for both the police pension and the Claire T. Singerman civilian pension. The change to the police pension is to broaden the time that we allow for a member to buy back service with a prior agency. Under the current plan, once they vested at 10 years, they were allowed four years to buy back any time at the full actuarial cost, meaning there's no cost to the city for this change to the ordinance. The employee has to pay both his contribution and what the city would have con contributed in order to have some more leave, some more time included in their pension so perhaps they may retire a little bit sooner or with a bigger benefit that they are paying for. That's the first part of the change. Again, it has no cost to the city, which will be verified because between the first reading and the second reading, we will come back with an actuarial impact statement so that you can then see that there's no cost to the city. The second part is a change to the Claire T. Singerman plan, and this also has no cost to the city. The Claire T. Singerman plan is a civilian plan that gives civilians benefits. However, there is a police officer who remains in this plan, and the state is giving the city money, has been giving the city money, to enhance the plan for the last 30 years and will continue to give us money as long as there is a police officer in this plan. This change simply enumerates a way to compensate that employee. The board had a lot of discussion about whether it was appropriate to have a different multiplier to increase the pension amount, but ultimately, since it was one employee, I was more in support of simply allocating this money to him in a lump sum payment upon retirement. With, any, with that, if we have any questions, I do have the pension board attorney here. Now, is this, is this the result of all the different meetings that we had been, this, the, this, the executive this meetings that we had, where we were negotiating uh, with the PBA, no? No. This is different? This is not due to negotiations. What we've done already with the negotiations has okay. closed the plan and we now are an FRS employer for new employees. The language for the Claire T. Singerman 
could have been done at any point in the last 30 years. For some reason, it hasn't been done. Ultimately, it does have to be done because there's money sitting in an account that we can't touch because the state gives us that money for the benefit of an employee. It's not our money. It's money the state gives from tax revenue. The other change is also one that could have been done a long time ago. The language in the, co in the plan is very restrictive. Many of the members were requesting no limit to be able to buy it back f during the entire course of their employment, but we settled on a 10-year limit so that we have more accountability. All right, thank you. Uh, does anyone in the public want to be heard on the item? This item, was it, it was R, as in rabbit? There is no one coming. Yes, it's left to up to us. Move approval. I don't know if Councilwoman Serafin has something to add. She was walking up during the debate of the discussion. No, I don't. <laughs> 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 okay. I'll mm. second. I have a motion made by Councilwoman Keys to approve tab R as is. The motion was seconded by Vice Mayor Galvin. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Vice Mayor Galvin? Yes. Councilwoman Keys? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Hazume? Yes. Item passes with a 5 0 vote. Tab S. Proposed ordinance first reading of the Mayor and City Council of the City of North Miami, Florida, amending Chapter 2 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of North Miami, entitled Administration, Article 3, entitled Boards, Committees, <coughs> Commissions, specifically at Division 2, entitled Board of Trustees of the North Miami Museum of Contemporary Art, MOCA, by amending the composition and structure of the MOCA Board of Trustees providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. That was tab S. Natasha Colebrook Williams, Intro MOCA Director. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This amendment um, basically affects the composition and structure of the Board of Trustees. Pretty much the amendments include, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. Natasha Colebrook Williams, Intro MOCA Director. The amendments affect the composition and structure of the Board of Trustees and its staff. Basically, we are amending the number of board members to make up a quorum, reducing it to six so that we can continue to function and operate. Additionally, pointing out that the director will be appointed by the city manager, no longer requiring the endorsement of the Board of Trustees. It would be a unclassified position, which would be an amendment to the ordinance. Additionally, we would ensure that each board member, mayor and council would appoint two board members, which in return, the board would appoint the additionals, minimal of 11 members, maximum of 31. Uh, through the mayor, I'd like to add, um, in addition, we are um, asking for more financial accountability for members who, individuals who would be uh, appointed or selected as board member increasing the financial contribution from currently 10000 a year to a $25,000 contribution. Um, all of this, these changes are being done um, in line with our, um, I guess, reorganization of the museum entity. Um, and I think as I've briefed with some of you, I've been uh, br um, interviewing directors and other staff, and we are uh, ready to get get MOCA back on back on track. So this is really the first legislative step to that, that effect. Thank you. Uh, we'll open it to the public at this time. Good evening, everyone. William Prevatel, 11950 North Bayshore Drive. Um, as I've said many times in the past, I, I really wish our city would give a little bit more attention, a lot more attention to our museum, uh, one of the treasured elements of this community. Um, I'm a little disturbed to hear that, uh, well, not only that we, that we go meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting without a peep about MOCA or any sign of interest about MOCA, but then when it does finally come up, it turns out to be a shakedown that has to 
to get somebody on the board we have to have ten thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars or where is the sense of of commitment that you might look for from somebody that's on the board where's the sense of background with a sense of interest a knowledge of art a knowledge of museums some other thing that they can contribute some other social connection to the community that they can contribute it's going to be a dollar down thing. We haven't learned the first time when we almost lost this place. It's really unfortunate. It seems like our city rarely ever learns from the mistakes we've made, and here it is again. I'm, I'm supporting. I'm supporting whatever it is that can be done to go forward with our museum. But good God, let's get our act together and make this the treasure that it once was. Let's restore it. Let's not jeopardize it. Let's not lose it and mishandle it. Let's do everything we can, draw from the community and elsewhere to get the best people in there on the board to do the best job with the best ideas. The money will follow. Thank you. Good afternoon. Silvia Maiola, 124th Street. Uh, I believe we can help art. It's very important for the city. And I agree with any help just to make everything better. And we spent $300,000 in a carnival who lasts six hours. We can spend a lot of more. Team, we spend a lot of money then. It's very important, finally, we do something for art, for the benefit of the city. Thank you. Good evening, uh, members of the council, Mr. Mayor. My name is Kevin Burns, 2065 Alamanda Drive. Um, just for clarification, um, is there a difference between board members and the board of trustees? As I read the uh, agenda, um, do we have a board of just trustees for MOCA and it's the up to 31? or is that a separate board within the board? Um, from this, um, uh, the packet, it claims that six members of a 31-member board constitutes a quorum. I'm on a lot of boards and a lot of organizations, and uh, that's not even 25% of the membership. If you have people that you're enticing to pay $25,000 to sit and be part of that group, I would think that attendance would be something that they were willing to go at. I would be uncomfortable, again, if it's a 31-member board that you're going to allow six members to conduct the business of the board um, as they choose fit. Uh, it's just a concern. Um, I don't know uh, if there's some clarification for that. And at this point in time, do you, should you really be upping the ante to 25000 or wait till you have a professional director a person who runs museums, who puts on uh, the, the, the type of events and runs an organization that th let them come up with the recommendation of if there's an additional fee. Um, I think 25, doubling it, you know, 75% more is a lot of money um, to, to ask somebody. But when you do sit on a board of directors, you either get it or you give it. Um, that's what I've always been told. But uh, those are two concerns and questions uh, that uh, I think need to be answered before you vote on this. Thank you very much. All right, public hearing is now closed. Colleagues? Can we have clarification on that last question raised by Mayor Burns? Is that 31 with six in attendance yeah, equals a quorum? Is that? Uh, Can't be. Um, that was, um, Mr. Mayor, if you allow me. That was one of my question um i know we had some issues um particular <coughs> when we were briefing mr manager um I, i'm i'm very supportive of of what you guys trying to do and of course of mocha but i do have those two little tiny questions and i know you were explaining some some factor as far as the executive director will be a city employee with city benefits and the other folks would not be, I'm assuming, and I just wanted some clarity on that part and also on the, um, the, 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 the quorum number. Is I'm sorry, uh, but 
Can we go question by question? I believe Vice Mayor had a question. I don't know if it was answered or not. It has not been answered. To Mr. To Mayor Burns' mm. point about 31 appointees versus six in attendance equaling a quorum, what is that answer? Uh, he, he's correct. Uh, the, the, the ordinance specifically states that six members would constitute a quorum. Um, I don't know if the, the director wants to talk about it, but uh, the, one of the issues that I know that the uh, MOCA board has been facing has been attendance at the meetings. I'm not sure when they've had the last meeting, but um, the issue has been ha how do you conduct business when people aren't showing up? And so the idea was to lower the number so that you can, if, if there are at least six people who are interested, they can do the business of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the organization. What, what history has shown is people may be willing to give that money but may not be willing to show up um, to, to, to these meetings. I mean, uh, someone who's capable of either raising or donating $25,000 may be too busy to actually show up to, to the meetings. And so we wanted to be able to allow the, uh, the, the meetings to, conduct, to be conducted. So that's how the number six was chosen. What's the former size of the MOCA board prior to Bonnie Clearwater's leaving? I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Well I don't know what the size was prior can to her. I make a motion that we continue this item until we can get a little bit more historical background on what we used to have versus what we would now have. Um, if, if no, uh, well, no, it's, I mean, the ordinance shows, it, well, it's, it's right there in the ordinance. I mean, anything that's been changed has been either crossed out or underlined. 31 has always been the number. That's, that's not changed. Okay. If I may, the quorum prior to this amendment was one third. So the reduction. Do we have 31 members on our board currently? We do not. Okay. Right now, currently, we have 24. So, so just to give you s and and wor perspective of where we are, um, and I've been working on this ordinance for over a year. We start. I started out with Roland Galdo, in working on this, and we went back and looked. We were trying to identify where was the resolution or or item passed to actually constitute the new appointees to the board. Um, a lot of that information was not there or did not happen. So this ordinance is really a, a reset of, of everything. Um, obviously, yes, I understand how someone can have a concern that we are increasing the contribution amount for a board member from 10,000 to 25,000. However- that doesn't, that doesn't concern me. Okay. They actually should be raising more like 100,000 <laughs> each, well, to be I'm, honest. I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. Um, Understand that MOCA Inc. is a is a, se a separate 501c3 or organization um, constituted by this city, the city commission, the city council. It runs a museum operation, and museum operations here locally, uh, regionally, and nationally thrive on the donations that it receives, in addition to grants and and contributions from local government. You as a council have shown your financial commitment for the last several years to this, to this institution. Um, we have done, we had, or the, the museum actually uh, uh, conducted a, uh, had a, or had a consultant come in and prepare a, uh, a strategic plan and it called for the city to continue to give this money. And I know that was not the will of this body. So we're, we took it internally and we did it step by step. Step one is reconstitute this board, give the council the opportunity to reappoint, deal with some of the operational issues that have come up out of litigation that we've had in the last year and a half. Um, so for instance, having the ability to um, not have the executive director be um, a classified employee, but rather at will, no different than any of the directors of the city. Um, the rest of the employees would be employees of MOCA Inc., the actual museum, and we would transition the hybrid between city employees and museum employees. So it is clear what their, what their mission and what their directive is. Okay. Um, beyond that, we can talk about the things, and I, and I understand, yes, there are people who want to contribute their time and, and work with the museum. We can create a uh, advisory board and other board levels the same way Pam does. Pam has the African-American group. They have this other group, not just the uh, executive board that actually is the main contributor to the institution. What we're talking about here are the main contributors, financial contributors to the group. 
And when you look at their their, I'm their sorry, Mr. Manager, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, are you through with your question? No. Uh, no, 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 Vice Mayor. Well, I was still listening to the explanation hmm? being given by the manager, so I. I but. Okay. Well. Just recap it. I mean, because okay. we so can't keep going. So that's. Hmm. So the, you see what the purpose of the six, you see what the purpose of the 25, and it could and it can be raise or raise or right. I'll roll with it tonight, but I, I am of the same mind. If people want to be on a board, I, I mean, I'm on a board of a $1.4 billion organization. I have to fly my booty out to Los Angeles four times a year and raise money, and you know, like they – if they're on and they want to be committed, they have to be committed. And butt needs, sorry if there's any people under age 18 here, but butt needs to be in the seat a few times a year. <coughs> and if they don't, if, I, I get, it's great if they want to write a $25,000 check, but then we can just give them a, a certain gift certificate and say thank you for your donation. You know, if they want to be on the board, they need to have a more vested interest in my opinion. All right, Ms. Councilman Desulme, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I actually forgot my question. But one of them was the quorum part. Can we have a, a separate title, an honorary member? Is that, uh, d does museum do that? I mean, I do agree with Councilman Gavin Echo and what my colleagues are saying. Um, we do want the money, and we know people who are millionaires, they don't have time for meetings. So can yeah. we put them in a but different? Yeah, they do. They do? Yeah, they do. The, the big people? They, oh. got to, they, got, they get to come to a meeting. I, I mean, don't I know. I yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> see, we don't have money like the mayor. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but to, to that point, if the mayor is a millionaire, and I don't know whether or not he is, but he's here, he's here Every single twice meeting. a month, and right, and how many times during the day? So that's not like an excuse that I'm too busy because I got a lot of money. So, in essence, ca can we do that? Can we entertain an uh, uh, advisory committee and then a working committee? Absolutely. Who that could have the 12 members and um, and six as a quorum, and the others will be honorary folks who, who th their main focus is giving the money, and if that's the concern I'm hearing. We can definitely put that in here. Um, and, uh, is that something we can add at second reading? or Anybody? I just, is, I just yeah. throw it out there. Mm -hmm. If there's a well, consensus by the body, that's oh. what you want, I mean and that's, that's what we'll be directed I'm, to no, do. No, I'm, I'm all about people being <laughs> unable to attend because they're too busy. That financial threshold better be way higher than $25,000 yes, yes, for I that. Agree. Okay. All right, um, um, yeah. Councilwoman. Where in this ordinance do you have the 25000 requirement, which is raised from 10000 It's It's not. So... We're all talking about we raised it to 25. Where is it? Through the manager, um, this is the first step to change the ordinance. The obligation, financial obligation, is something that's in the bylaws that will have to come before you to be amended as well. So we haven't done the bylaws no, yet? No, it's not. It's so we we're still at 10. This has nothing to do with financial requirement. We've, we're still at the 10,000? Correct. It does not point out the financial obligation. Okay. And the 10,000? And the bylaws now the ten thousand is raise or donate ten thousand. It's donated as written now, but we would amend Which it. But you could raise it. Okay. True. I'm done. Uh, it's between you and. Okay, I said he's done. I have a question, and how do you plan on collect that money when you cannot collect ten thousand from the people? This ordinance. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Through the manager, this ordinance will basically. We would have to reappoint new board members. Oh, one more question. Yeah. We have not had the participation of our current board of trustees, so you will be appointing new How board members. How many members do we have last time, right now? 24. How many of them have paid a contribution? One. And that was not this year. Thank you. One more question. Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. last question, Mr. Manager. Go on. You have one. Okay. You, you want to yield? You want to yield? Go ahead. Go ahead. It's up to okay. you. I had this discussion with the manager, and the question is: Is our board? Do we really have a board? Did we really vote? Did, are we in compliance with the bylaws? And we actually have a board. And does this? Do we have the mechanism that if they are in fact a board, do we get rid of them? Do they? Does it terminate? We start from scratch. I mean, you've got people out there who think the board of directors are they, and do we just <laughs> say after tonight you're 
Cliff, you're gone, and we start all over? How are we doing that? Uh, and yeah. I, I think it needs to be clear. Um, Councilwoman, uh, again, as the manager mentioned, this was going on before I even got here, but since I've been here, we've been looking at this. Um, and so this really, as the manager said, this is phase one. So we have to come back with the bylaws. He has to hire an executive director. And as ha there has been litigation also going on, which you all know about. Um, so the idea is we are s hitting the reset button. Um, as far as we know, there is no, we could not find an, a resolution or ordinance uh, appointing anyone as a, as a board member. Um, so this tonight would start everything all over again. You all would select uh, the, your, your 10 individuals at some later date. Those 10 individuals would be responsible for selecting the rest of the, of the board and we get started all over again. To Councilman uh, Bienname's uh, point, hopefully you appoint people who would be willing to pay either the 10,000 or the 25,000, whatever number that we come up with so that that would be collected. But at some point the idea is this will be a viable group of people who will run the museum without the financial um, obligation that the city has taken on to, to support it all along. So this is really the first step. Do we need something in this ordinance saying this is a reset button it's ordinance? No, because there's, we don't, this is the first no. ordinance. It's there is no other ordinance. Well, yeah. Through the manager, if you refer through to section 2-61C, it says on one states that effective June 27th, which would be the second reading, it would be a restart button. Okay. Councilman? Yes, one last question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. M uh, Mr. Manager, my, my last question to you, because I'm very concerned about this. Um, I think it's section 2 66, well, pertaining to the director, but you're saying all additional staff, well, the other staff would not be city staff. So, uh, and that's my concern. So, insurance and, and, and all that, do would they have their own? Yes, they have it now. And no. Do they have it now, or they they part of us now? No, they have it we now. You have Mocha employees right now. Yes. Okay, so the Mocha employees currently are not city employees. No. Correct. So they don't get they get paid separately, and, and everything is separate. Yes, Correct. Sir. Okay. Okay. Because it's, because it's Mocha Incorporated. It's Mocha. Okay. Mocha. I was under the impression that um, so we just give them the money and they they run their their own shop basically. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Our final word on the. If we say that we're going to accept out of 31 members for six people to be making decisions for this entire board, I understand MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art. I don't, I don't consider it a local museum. From my understanding, this is an international museum. <coughs> and, 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 and we're saying that we will agree that one-fifth of the board will constitute a quorum to conduct business on a regular basis? So uh, hold on a second, I'm, I'm, I'm not through yet. Uh, also, the uh, former mayor mentioned, when we talk about board, and I mean, they are different. There is a board of directors that would conduct the regular business. And then we have board of trustees. Those board of, you can call it whatever you want. It's the highest board. You may want to call it board of trustees or board of governors. You know, some people call it, some organizations call them like that. I mean, this is the board that meets maybe once a year. And when they meet, they, it's usually like a reception. They go over the financials, over wha whatever progress or lack thereof that's going on with the institution. So if we're really serious about MOCA, voting on this tonight is really not a good thing to do. I think we need, to, we need to go back and sit down. If we have to get a group of consultants, because don't think that we can do everything. I mean, like I said, I don't know anything about museum, and there are laws about museum. There are associations of museum. I mean, there are all kinds of society that, that controls the rules, the regulations of museum. We are policy makers, yes. But I, to be honest with you, I think this is beyond me. I don't know about the, the rest of you. It's way beyond me. I'm not, I'm not going to vote on this tonight. I'd like to get started, yeah. and then we can amend it, too. But you, if you start the wrong way, just like when, you, when, when you're sewing a shirt, if you start with the wrong cut, that shirt is going to end up being the wrong shirt. I know, I mean, you know how, you know how I hold mocha very dear to my heart, and I, and I brag about mocha as, as, as our jewel. 
you know, wherever I go, I brag about mocha. This is, I mean, this is the pinnacle of 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 our uh, city. But I don't know. But it's just that we just have to do better. Where, where do you, um, no, I don't know. To the mayor, mm. can I be acknowledged? Yeah, go ahead. I want to say this. Um, yes, you're right. There are rules of, of museums. We are members of the AMA. We are going through this process to ensure that we can hold on to our accreditation. Yes, so it's not just about what city manager wants to do. It is about moving the museum forward. Again, this is a s this is a step. If it's the wish of this council to go and spend money to go hire a consultant to walk us through this same process, I'm all, you know, whatever the will of the council is is just we can get some of that assistance from outside parties and still pass this this ordinance or at least start down the process of passing the ordinance. Um, the other thing is, you know, you can change the board structures. We can look at a, a board of governors, um, an executive board that actually does the operating operations of it. Mm -hmm. But where we are, again, and, and the accreditation is probably my most critical timeline issue, we the went to the AMA, we met with uh, the folks that accredited us, and they said, you need to do X, Y, and Z in very short order to show us that you are moving. Now, if you modify later and all that stuff, you can do it. That's why we, we've we already hired a curator of education and public programs who will be starting in August 2nd. August 2nd. And we've I've interviewed two directors, but we're going to do a panel. And we are seeking advice from other museum executives as part of this process. This is not me or Natasha or the city attorney in a vacuum, but if it is the will of the board to to No, I mean, if, if it is an accreditation issue and if we're facing some kind of uh, dilemma as far as accreditation is concerned, um, this is the first reading after right. all. So, yeah. This is the first reading, so we can always move forward and then on the second reading, we and may come with uh, further, you and know, modifications or whatever. And like yeah. always, I give you. But my I just want to let word. it be known that this is not sufficient okay. for the caliber of museum that we have. Okay. We just have to be a little bit more sophisticated. I mean, that's all. Okay. And you have my word to. I'm I'm hearing everything that you guys are saying right now, and we will make sure that it is every point is addressed. So. All right. Move Let approval. Second. Second. Are we moved? By the way, when our accreditation is expiring? What's the date? We have our self-study in November, and then we have a year out for our visit. Okay. Is this an, an ordinance, or this is, this is okay? And also, uh, Ms. Colebrook, you mentioned that as it is right now, we do not have a board. We have a board of trustees, but we have not have had meetings because of a lack of a quorum. The last three meetings. Board of trustees, but what about an executive board? We have an executive board. The board chair is very much so involved. But an official board meeting, we've canceled the last three due to a lack of a quorum. Because of a lack of quorum. Okay. So Mayor, we have a motion made by Vice Mayor Galvin to approve tab S. The motion was seconded by Councilman Bienime. Roll call vote. Vice Mayor Galvin? Yes. Councilwoman Keyes? Yes. Councilman Bienname? Yes. Councilman Desume? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Yes. Item passes with a 5 0 vote. I believe now we're up to. We have a tab T. I don't know how we're going to proceed with that. Tab T? I don't have that. You don't have that? Mr. Mayor, the item is to approve a voting delegate for the August 17th through 19th uh, Florida League of Cities annual conference in Orlando. I would motion if the mayor is attending that the mayor be our voting delegate. All right, let me go ahead and read it into the record. <laughs> so tab T, designate 
a municipality voting delegate to represent the city of North Miami at the 91st annual conference of the Florida League of Cities, August 17th through 19th, 2017, and represent the city for the term needed? No, that was just added? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that concludes it. So between August 17th through 19th, 2017. Thank you. I'll motion that- uh, can, I, can I declare an ask you and, and nomination? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I can. <laughs> All right, I withdraw my motion. I understand the mayor is not in attendance. I'd uh, nominate uh, uh, Councilman Bienname. Yes, I, I would second be, that. I would be there anyway with the Board of Trustee for the Florida Municipal Trust Fund. That's there we go. Okay. 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 I have a motion made. I'm sorry, Councilman. You ready, Bienname? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a motion made I by Vice Mayor it. Galvin to, to nominate Councilman Bienname. That motion was seconded by Councilman Desume. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Item passes with a 5-0 vote. Hey, wow. Well, do we, Citizen Forum? <laughs> what, when do we That's bring early? up the, the, um, um, the appointment of the... This is a reasonable the time for people to be heard on any item. Yes, you sir. have two minutes to... Timekeeper, please. Be strict on the time, because... When do we start? Go ahead. You have five seconds already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, Mayor. <laughs> First, let me congratulate uh, Mayor, mm -hmm. Councilman Benname, Councilwoman Keys on your re-election. My heartiest congratulations to you. Secondly, um, we're going to be doing the LDRs, I, I understand. I would suggest that the Planning Commission be present also. It's a voluminous, voluminous thing, and it should be a standalone item. And that's my suggestion to you. I mean, I, I went through that for hours looking through those LDRs and coming up with different suggestions and changes. So I think the board, the, the planning commission should be present for that meeting as a board to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, uh, several months ago, you all passed an ordinance very nobly about the prohibit, prohibiting the use of uh, herbicides, so forth and so on, to stop the weeds and very noble. But I have a problem. As feasible manner, from the bloody ducks that I see all over this city, and I'm telling you, you know, I, I walk up 16th Avenue, there must be 20, 30 Muscovy ducks, and they're crapping all over the place. Uh, they're, they're just growing in numbers, in leaps and bounds. About 20 years ago, when I'm on, on my lake, Emerald Lake, we almost lost it. We had about two, 300 ducks out there, and the lake went from its pristine, clear color to absolute pea green soup. And the reason was the duck's waste. One pound of, of, of duck's waste feeds a million units of plankton. You lose your body of oxygen on demand, and we almost lost Emerald Lake because of that. I heard a young lady when she was talking about how her child was yes, allergic was to uh, one of the herbicides that we sell at uh, uh, Home Depot or what have you. Well, let me tell you, Mayor, you're a doctor. Feasible matter is dangerous. Instead of putting up signs that duck walk, be careful of the ducks and uh, driving around and don't hit the ducks. You know, I see cars today stopping on 16th Avenue because the ducks had to cross. I see people out there feeding the darn ducks. All right. It's a lot of nonsense. Get rid I of the darn the ducks. They seconds. can't vote. Thank you. But Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, before the, can you explain oh, the way we have to stop that? Bay Shore Drive. That's going to start uh, in I'd October. I'd like to second we Commissioner still do each. That. That's we need you. Second Commissioner Each's uh, yeah, sentiments on, yeah, on uh, set, we set the time, maybe. Uh, to second his sentiments on uh, uh, both the ducks and, and the LDRs. Uh, the LDRs are so important, and I do hope that the uh, Planning Commission is made a part of that. Uh, I'm going to sh share a joke uh, by D.L. Hughley recently, I saw a couple weeks ago, and it was about, uh, got into a bit of politics, but thought that some people <coughs> voted um, not to their own interest, and he brought up the, in particular, that diabetic people voted basically to get their health care coverage uh, dismissed. And in the process, he says uh, that people's hatred for one thing or another actually rivaled their love of their own feet. 
the reason i'm bringing this up is because it reminds me of our city a little bit that we have taken a certain section of our city a new and upcoming section with no voters at all and have given it every benefit possible up and down the line a lease that was favorable to them a sale that was favorable to them plans that were favorable to them contaminated fill favorable to them we even went out of our way to vote to change the transparency so that it goes to not 25, 30, 50 percent, but to 51 percent. So that someone who was on stage the other week, uh, one, of, one of the people was on stage with um, the great orange apocalypse, uh, could benefit from this. When does our city benefit? When did the people of the city benefit? When did the rules and regulations start to transpose and, and get down to helping out our neighborhoods? Where's the increase to our parks? Where's the improved track for patterns? Where's the, the better zoning that we should have? Why is everything stifled, stifled, stifled? And yet, magically, despite having gone to every damn one of these public meetings and workshops, Biscayne Landing could go from 250 feet, which no one asked, and I'll magically, magically get another 200 feet. Who asked for that? Did anybody ask for that? Because we demanded or we, we requested a few feet here, a few feet there through the entire city, right. and it didn't happen. And right. this magically happens. Thank you very Interesting. much. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. You're yes, on, Jim. Oh, okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Mayor um, Joseph. Thank you. Councilman Keyes and Councilman Benjamin for your, your re-election. Um, I like. To, I, I do like to see all five of you smile. Yeah. That's a change up here. Yeah. Just for the record, if you would give your name and yeah, address. Yeah. Jim Garrett, one one six. Once they were North Bayshore Drive, North Miami, Florida, 33181. I have three questions to the city council and the city administration. How much did the city pay Metro Miami-Dade County to coordinate the May 2017 elections? The number two question, does the city have any external liability insurance to cover the two existing lawsuits and possibly any future lawsuits? And my third question, is there any city funds pay for the publication of the recent article feature in Invest Miami? Those are my three questions. Mm -hmm. I know you might have to research these items and come back at the next meeting. Thank you. You want to answer yours? Regarding the Miami-Dade elections, City of North Miami election, it usually costs us between 160000 to about 180000 to conduct our elections. We have money in the budget for it. We're still waiting on the invoice, but we're expecting it's going to cost roughly 150 to 180 give or take. No rebuttal, no rebuttal. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as far as the rest of the questions, uh, I would uh, urge our manager to get with the finance director and see if we can forward an, an answer to Mr. I'm sorry, I didn't get the last name. Hmm? Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett, please. Okay. Public uh, citizen forum is still open, but I see no one coming to the mic. Citizen forum is not closed. We'll entertain some reports at this time from Councilwoman. Um, I don't have a report, hmm. but um, Senator Campbell raised something about some home, not some type of shelters for displaced people. And since we can't talk about it, I want to ask you about it. This morning, we had. Um, one of our apartment projects, four units burned down, displaced four families. The same apartment project um, lost another building just three weeks ago, and four families were displaced. And I know we called the Red Cross. I thought our planning commission had something. So I would like to find out more about what our city is doing for people who are uh, misplaced in these type of catastrophes. I don't know that we have funds, but uh, something was thrown out this evening, so I would like to learn more about it. Thank you. Do you want to talk about it? Currently, um, through the mayor, we don't have, we've, I've worked with uh, CPND. We typically refer them to. How come uh, our CPND director is not here? She's here. <laughs> huh? She, she's there. You want her to talk? Or you no, I can, I can address it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently, we do not have funds specifically set aside for like emergency placements, but it is one of the directors that I gave them internally for us to look at to do some some temporary housing. Typically, we do just what happened the other day. We've referred them to the Red Cross or 
this county or other agencies mm -hmm. um, in that emergency uh, moment. But we are looking as we come into the new fiscal year to do some, if we have some CDBG or some dollars to set aside to do maybe two or three nights or something in a hotel um, to help out in that temporary. These, these people, their buildings, both buildings have been condemned and they are displaced permanently. And I know the Red Cross gives them two or three nights, which really just doesn't help. So. All right. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Was the Senator, is the Senator giving us money for this project? Is this it's something that she's going to be pursuing in the next It's actually, cycle it, it was very, very, very premature. This is something that is in its embryonic stage. Okay. That's uh, why you said shh. The egg. <laughs> And Daphne Campbell sperm, wasn't quiet? The, the sperm has barely conceived the egg, and we get a bit more ruler at this time. Okay. We don't have no feet, no leg, no, <laughs> no, no spine. <laughs> but good intent. Don't no, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. but no, it's going to get somewhere. That, that's all that I've <laughs> had. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Councilman? No, no yeah. report, sir. I do? Which report? <laughs> no, they already announced it. It's Oh, yeah. For the entire yeah, I think Natasha announced it. No, not Natasha. Um, Cassandra announced it. You the could announce it, Councilman. How many trees? I you, you could announce it. Go ahead. It's for the Is city. Is it for the entire city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could come and get some trees. Can we, Mr. Manager, can you repeat the, the announcement about uh, the tree? This is uh, distribution? this Saturday, June 17th. Uh, I'll read it as it was read before. Join Councilman Alex Nasume in District 4 for tree planting, tree giveaways, and more. The event will take place at the Joe Celestine Center beginning at 9 a.m. For Have all residents? Everybody. Or District 4 only? Who are you trying to? <laughs> Have these trees sure gone through custom? That have they gone through custom? Exactly. Everybody I, I, can I, come. I don't, I don't know. No pest. Uh, uh? I'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Is it for everybody? Yes, it's for everybody. Okay. All right. Councilman bien your final, your report? I have no report. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor, yeah, before interested. we go, uh, uh, this was, this oh. list of board appointments was for at my desk tonight for without time. explanation. Is, is Does that mean it's time to reappoint board? Yeah, because I inquired, if I may answer, I talked to, uh, what's Stephanie's title? Deputy? Deputy, yeah. I, I'm confused with all the titles. And I, I, I'm the one who requested her to furnish this to us. So that next meeting we can be ready to appoint, uh, because um, it is my understanding with okay. every re-election, re your appointees your get expired yes. automatically. It so, Mr. Mayor, so at the same time, yes. I, you know, when once we ready to do this, it, I think we'll be mindful that we look at the boards that has been functioning and boards that we don't even need anymore. Yeah. See what we could do with it. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Uh, and, uh, oh, sorry, Mr. <laughs> Attorney. Uh, Mr. Clerk no has no report tonight. Now I got, you got two board appointments. You guys want to do it now or you want to do it? We were going to wait. We were going to wait. So, so Mayor, you had one. We'll wait. And Councilwoman Keys had one. You guys want to wait? You can just read it. I mean, it's yeah, done. It, it's uh, done. Who do you have? I, I, I you guys make your I'll yeah, do my next meeting. You know what, what happened, uh, next meeting too? Next Mr. Meeting. Clerk? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's people on the list who never show up. That's when if you can give us a list of presence. That would be very important. Instead of we appoint the same people who never show up at right. What Councilman Bierman is saying is true. We don't administer the boards. We don't have. I don't have any authorization over and the boards. The office of the manager does. We just read it out. So oh. I'm sure he can get someone to give the you that update. Yeah. And yeah. you guys yeah. let us know what you want to do. So no appointments. I'm just gonna let read these yeah. next year. I have, let have something. Let I have my appointee sitting in the audience who's been waiting very long. So you want me to make your appointment now, yeah, Councilwoman? Is it okay, yes. Mayor? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Councilwoman Keys would like to appoint Benjamin Whitaker to the Yelp. Youth Opportunity Board. Do I Yay. have a motion? <laughs> All right. He's good. Good. Oh, very good. Very good. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes. yes. Second. So, so move. move. Oh. Okay. So I have keys. Made the motion. Council. Um. Um. Councilman. Councilman Keys made the motion. Councilman Des may second the motion. All in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed. Item passes with a five-zero vote. Thanks. Am I reappointment? Can oh, we do the no. next meeting? Okay. Fine. City Attorney. Reappointment also for my holiday, but it's okay. I have no Maybe report, Mayor. Mr. Manager? I have two quick items. Um, one, um, in our one-on-one -on -one briefings, I brought up the issue of changing the date of the next meeting from the 27th to the 26th at a request of 
what day is the 26th? It's the Monday. It will be the Monday. You know what? I'm, I'm terribly sorry because right before the meeting, I was supposed to go to Bosnia on the 27th if with the League of City, right? Sister Cities. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, international sister city for one week, but I just learned uh, that that uh, trip has been canceled, and that was the reason for asking to okay. change the meeting date. So, so disregard that item. Disregard that. So um, the that. other thing is some great news. Um, I think, as you know, we this our city's water utility uh, division of public works. Uh, was recently awarded the best water in the entire state of Florida. Yes. Um, today they were at the national uh, tasting. Um, we came in, we, we placed, uh, well, we, we advanced to the finals, we placed in top seven in the people's, cho the people's Choice Best of the Best Tap Water Test. So we're the seventh best water in the, in country. the entire country. So seven? kudos. There's a lot of places. I, I, I don't, uh, 34, 30, 34, 34? yeah, out of a national competition of 34. 34 All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Manager. With that, we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone, for coming.